17 amazing Irish castles. Today we're focusing on Ireland, the island of lush, rolling green hills, fiery redheads, and turbulent times. It's absolutely full of castles, so we decided what better way to learn a little bit more about the interesting country than through some of its coolest, oldest structures. Number 17, Castle Ward. You may recognize Castle Ward as the location of Winterfell, the backdrop for Game of Thrones. Architects see Castle Ward as an oddity of craftsmanship that represents the differing tastes of its builders, Irish politician Bernard Ward and his wife, Lady Anne Bly. The entrance side of the building was designed in a Palladian style, while the opposite side was Georgian Gothic. The castle and grounds are open to the public, and today you'll find landscape gardens, a theater, and a restaurant. Number 16. Bally Moon. Unlike a lot of these castles, which were fully built at one time, Bally Moon in the upper Barrow Valley seems to have been abandoned midway through its construction. Why people suddenly forsook this massive uptaking remains a mystery to this day. Though political turmoil, combined with severe famines in the area at the time of its initial construction, sometime around the year 1300, are hypothesized reasons for why Ballymoon was abandoned. Number 15. Island Castle As you can see, one of the most remarkable aspects of this castle in County Cavan is its surroundings, which are made up of water. The circular ruins lie on a small island in the historic kingdom of Brefni. The O'Reilly clan took possession of the land and completed construction of the castle in the mid-1200s. They used it for centuries as a part of their conflicts, both with their rivals and within their own ranks. In the 1360s, Philip O'Reilly was imprisoned and given just oats and a cup of water a day, compelling the famished man to eventually go to such lengths as drinking his own urine. Number 14. Folksrath Found in County Kilkenny, Folksrath Castle is the site of a very amusing occurrence, though not for one unfortunate butler. The castle's been around since the mid-1300s, but our story takes place hundreds of years after it was built. In 1857, Goodwin Mead Pratt Swift, who was related to famous author Jonathan Swift, had just patented his aerial chariot, the first aircraft in Ireland. To test it, he sent his butler to the top of the castle with a device. Using a catapult, he flung the plane and its pilot off the structure. Swift held the party, where he hoped the highlight would be the graceful arrival of his recent invention from the sky. Instead, the craft immediately did a nosedive straight into the ground. The poor butler survived the incident, but paid for the aerial chariot's lack of sustained flight with several broken bones. Though reports indicate he received a pension for life. Number 13. Castle Roche. Rohingya de Verdun of England was married to the second chief butler of Ireland in the early 1200s. While traveling in France, her husband suddenly died, leaving Rohingya with all of his land. She immediately went to Ireland and fortified her newly acquired land in County Louth with a castle. The woman had a very quick-tempered reputation that eventually deterred all potential architects. According to legend, in order to get the castle built to her liking, she married a man who would do whatever she wanted. As the story goes, after the wedding ceremony, she invited her new husband to view their estate from the large bedroom window, before pushing him from the opening to his untimely and unearned death. Number 12. Leap Castle. Reports vary as to when this castle was originally built, but it was definitely the residence of the O'Carroll clan in the 1500s. While fighting for control of the clan, one of the O'Carroll sons murdered his brother, a priest, with a sword in the middle of mass in the castle's chapel. It's one of many sinister tales of the brutality that was seen within the walls of Leap Castle. Its unsavory history has led to Leap Castle being referred to as the most haunted castle in Ireland. Number 11. Burr Castle. Castles have been on the site of Burr Castle since 1170, and for hundreds of years the mighty O'Carroll clan ruled the castle in the surrounding area, which at the time was known as Eli O'Carroll. Today it's home of the 7th Earl of Ross, making it the only residence on this list. Obviously the castle itself isn't open to the public, but the surrounding gardens and Ireland's historic science center, also on the grounds, are open for everyone to explore. Number 10. Carrigaholt. This castle is really well preserved, especially when you consider the fact it was built in 1408. It stands at the end of a fishing pier overlooking a harbor, making for a spectacular sight. Close by is a small fishing village and the Catholic parish that go by the same name. The castle was continuously occupied and added to it until the late 19th century. Today it's just a shell of what it used to be and is property of the Office of Public Works. Number 9. Valley Lohan Located in County Carlow, near the aforementioned Valley Moon, this castle is in ruins, though it's still a pretty glorious site. A gatehouse with twin towers, the hall, and some foundations that date all the way back to the 14th century still stand today. Number 8. Carlow A national monument of Ireland, Carlow Castle was built between 1207 and 1213 in County Carlow. Throughout its rich history, it changed hands several times including when it was taken over briefly by England's Oliver Cromwell in 1650. Unfortunately, a local physician tried, and failed it would seem, to remodel the structure into an asylum in the early 19th century. Using explosives, he demolished everything but what you see standing today. Number 7. Huntington While most of these castles lay in ruins in the middle of lush green Irish fields, Huntington thrives today as a private house with magnificent gardens that are open for tours. Originally, the tower house served as a garrison for the Cavaness family, an old Irish clan in the 15th century. While it's a beautiful place today, Huntington is also a place that is rumored to be full of the ghosts of 
druids in the fields and in the castle itself. Number 6. Balanalakin Located in County Clare, the land surrounding Balanalakin was all reportedly the site of a fortress built in the late 14th century. Pictures exist from the 19th century of the castle with residents nearby. Today the castle remains and with a hotel nearby, visiting is encouraged. Number 5. Dunagor This castle was built overlooking the Atlantic Ocean in the village of Doolin in County Clare. The O'Brien dynasty owned it for a time until it was handed over to the British crown before it fell to the Clancy family. When a ship of the Spanish Armada wrecked near the village, the high sheriff of the county, Botus Clancy, had all 170 survivors captured and hanged at the castle. Number 4. Bunratty King Henry III of England first had control of Bunratty before giving it to the Declares, a family of Norman lords. When several members of the Declares were killed, the old castle fell into disrepair and eventually crumbled. No traces of it remain today. The current structure was built by the McNamara family, another prominent group in the area in the 1400s. The powerful O'Brien clan attacked the castle several times throughout its history and would eventually take over for a time around the year 1500. Number 3. Doe Castle. The O'Connors, a prominent aristocratic Catholic family in Ireland, built Doe Castle in the early 1300s in County Clare. Nothing remains of this original structure and, thanks to the fact that the land it rests on is sand, the castle collapsed and was rebuilt several times. Today only ruins of the once grand castle remain. Number 2. Newtown. This castle was built in 1550 for the powerful and ever-present O'Brien clan. Eventually it was passed into the possession of one of the area's most powerful clans, the O'Loughlin family. It's one of the few round tower houses in all of Ireland. It was restored in the early 1990s for used by the Byrne College of Art. Today it's available as a venue for weddings and conferences and is open to the public on weekdays. Don't all of these sweet castles make you want to take a trip to Ireland? Anyways, thanks so much for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time. Oh yeah, and don't forget you still have one more castle to go. Number one. Trim Castle. Plenty of people have been impressed by this, the largest Norman castle in the country over the years. Mel Gibson was so in awe that he used it in the filming of Braveheart. The castle, which is located in County Meath, was used as a center of Norman administration by King Henry II of England in the 12th century. In 1172, Hugh de Lacy, an Anglo-Norman landowner and office holder, took possession of it and turned it into the 30,000 square meter masterpiece that has endured to this day. It's open to the public for an admittance fee.